Today we're going to learn all about how to harvest and process beaked hazelnuts, which is a native hazelnut in the Pacific Northwest. This is a pretty slow process that takes a lot of steps, but the nuts are so delicious that they are definitely worth it. Beaked hazelnuts grow on both sides of the Cascade Range. On the west side of the Cascade Range, they don't tend to fruit as much. They do have a couple of fruits, but I find that the squirrels usually get to them. I don't know if that's because they have a lot of coverage over them and so they don't get enough sun to really heavily fruit. East of the Cascades, I find that this plant fruits way more. And by fruit, I mean like it just bears more nuts per bush. Um, so that just makes it a lot easier to harvest. I happen to live on the Eastern Slope of the Cascades and I just harvested like a bunch from just one spot. So they're pretty easy to find. And I also find that there's not as much competition from squirrels and it's a little bit easier to like leave squirrels enough for them. The good thing about the lookalikes for this shrub is that none of them have beaked hazelnuts on them. So once you go to harvest them, it's actually pretty easy to identify beaked hazelnuts from a lineup. So let's talk about this beak that the name comes from, all right? We have these super obvious beaks that come on each of the nuts and it is the husk of the nut that creates that beak and inside there's gonna be a nut that looks like this. Ching! Beak hazelnut leaves look a lot like red alder leaves. The shape's similar, but beak hazelnut leaves are quite fuzzy. You can hear that. They also have fine tooth serration on the edges of the leaves and the veins are pretty straight as you can see. This is what the shelled nuts look like and they're a little bit smaller than regular hazelnuts. These nuts, as you can see, grow in clusters. Sometimes there's like six in a cluster, sometimes there's three, sometimes there's two, and sometimes there's just one. It really depends on how many get pollinated during the really early season in which hazelnut flowers and is pollinated. Now, let's take a quick look at European hazelnut, because this is the only plant that you might mistake beaked hazelnut for. The hazelnuts have a different husk, they're much bigger, and they ripen later in the year. We harvest beaked hazelnuts in July and August, and here where I live, it's a little bit higher elevation, so it's gonna be on the more August side of things, but like if you live in the Seattle area, the harvest is gonna be more around July. Sometimes you can still get some nuts in early September if you're really high up in elevation, and actually today that I'm making the video is in early September, and I was able to find some nuts still on the bush, very ripe. All right, now, probably the most important part of this video, how to tell if your hazelnuts are ripe. This is actually more challenging than you would think. Um, I think a lot of people might accidentally harvest these nuts quite early. And the benefit of harvesting them a little bit early is that you're gonna beat the squirrels to them. And if you live on the west side of the Cascades, that's actually kind of hard. Um, and the nuts are often developed when the husk is still green, but you really, for the best possible nut, you wanna wait a little bit longer than that. A lot of sources say to wait until the nut is actually falling out of the husk which today when I went harvesting, I did find them falling out of the husk like this. The problem with waiting this long to harvest is that sometimes the squirrels will have gotten them all, okay? Um, either that or a lot of them will have bugs in them. So I harvested this year a bunch to test and when the husks start kind of drying out a little bit and looking a little bit yellow, that's kind of when they first start being ripe. Um, you can wait all the way until they're really ripe the only danger, of course, again, is squirrels and bugs. The only problem with harvesting them a little bit too early is that sometimes the nuts haven't formed or they're really small. When you are harvesting the nuts, you want to wear gloves. Leather gloves work, gardening gloves work. Be aware that if you're going to use the kind of gardening gloves with rubber and then a little bit of cloth on the top, that sometimes the hairs of the husks can get into the top and make your hands itch a little bit. Um, and that is the issue, is that these little husks have micro hairs in them that don't look menacing until you get them embedded into your fingertips. All right, whenever we're foraging, we always wanna think about the wildlife that are also relying on whatever we're harvesting as a food source. In the case of beaked hazelnuts, we are in competition with the squirrels and the chipmunks. So I always like to leave about 50% of the nuts on the shrub. And if there's only four nuts on the shrub, that means you're gonna harvest only two nuts. Yes, indeed. Um, city squirrels, especially if you're harvesting like in a really urban area, they don't have a lot of food sources. So it's really important to leave enough for them so that they can have their natural food and maybe aren't like digging in trash cans for food because that's a bummer. All right, next we need to dry our nuts. Um, this takes about two weeks. We wanna wait until the husk is completely dry and peels off really easily. Here are some dried nuts that have been drying right over there in my sunroom. 
Hazelnuts and nuts in general do go rancid if you just crack them and store them on the shelf at room temperature. Um, I would recommend not storing them for longer than three months or so. They do go rancid, which you can smell. It smells kind of tangy and metallic. It's a smell that I really don't like and rancid nuts are actually kind of bad for you because they have free radicals in them that can damage your cell walls, which is true of all rancid oils, yikes. So you can either store your nuts in the freezer, you can store them in the shells, which they store for a little bit longer than that. Um, freezer, I wouldn't keep them in there for more than a year or so, but kind of the best solution is just to eat them when they're fresh and in season and then leave it for that. All right, our goal here is to basically rub the husks off of the nuts. And we can do that by kind of rubbing them between our fingers and eventually, whoo, the nut will pop right out. There you go. I finished dehusking all of the dried hazelnuts and they should look like this with no holes and some of the nuts do have holes in the top and that is a little boring insect that goes in and lays their eggs in there. So, and it eats the nut. So we want to discard those. There's what the husks look like after they've been peeled off. And let's also look at this guy. Um, this isn't a hole per se, but it's kind of like a brown discoloration. There's probably a bug inside this one as well. You can always crack it if you're unsure. Now we're going to roast the nuts in the shells because it makes them easier to take the shells off. I have the oven at 300 degrees and I'm gonna put them in there for 20 minutes. All right, they are all done. So we're gonna take them out and they're a little bit browner than when I put them in there, which is a good sign. And they smell nice and nutty. This is the nutcracker I used. I got it on Amazon, but you can also get them from kitchen stores. Pretty much any nutcracker will work. You just wanna make sure you're not crushing the bejesus out of each nut so that it actually is intact and whole when it gets out. It took me a while to get used to this cracker and some of the nuts are too small for it, but I did manage to get some whole nuts. If you have a better way to crack them, please let us know in the comments. I have a book about foraging medicinal plants in the Pacific Northwest. It just came out in April 2024 and it has 35 things that you can harvest that are super common in the Pacific Northwest. It also has recipes with pictures and how to harvest. That's my friend. Here is the page on gumweed or grindelia. And I like to include things like how the seeds are shaped and how the leaves are shaped and how the basil leaves are shaped. Um, so that you can identify the plants more easily in the field. So if this looks really cool to you, you can check it out. It's for sale on Amazon and from my publisher, Mountaineers.